Well, hi. Um, here I am again. For some reason, we keep doing these shows. And uh, this time, we have some real good guests that I'm really excited to share with you. Um, would you uh, think about what you would really like to see happen in a, uh, maybe uh, 10 years or so with our government in the White House and all of a sudden they say, and here's the president of the United States, Roxanne Qualls. So <laughs> here's Roxanne. <laughs> I'm just well, thank you. <laughs> I would really like that. Um, I, uh, I don't know much about city government. I keep dealing with these people who know tons of stuff about city government mm -hmm. and I don't know much of anything. Uh, but you know, the one thing I know I'm supposed to do is vote all the time, uh, only once. And, uh, <laughs> preferably. And, <laughs> preferably. And uh, I know I'm supposed to vote for you because you're concerned with the stuff that I really think is important. Earth Day is Sunday. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for Earth Day? Well, I've been doing stuff all week for Earth Day. Oh, God, I bet. <laughs> In fact, on, uh, on Tuesday... It was, a real, it was a real nice day. I started out talking to high school students in the morning, college students at noontime, uh, the 500 employees of Fernald at 2.30. Oh, Lord. And then... Um, Are they really annoyed? The employees? Are they really scared? Or did they not think about it? No, I think, that, I think they're very, very concerned. And for a lot of reasons. One, the situation at Fernald, also their own personal situation, which you can't really fault them for yeah. um, because it's real um, tenuous. Yeah. Um, and and I think that they also are, some of them are as frustrated as the rest of the community. Yeah. You know, they want to see faster progress. They want to see cleanup. Um, walking out to the car, I heard complaints saying, you know, if, they, if, if, if the Department of Energy would just give us the money. Yeah. And instead of behaving like they've been behaving for the last 40 <laughs> Which years. Which is not quite as good as we want them to right. behave. And then today was great. It was Fountain Square. It was the uh, kickoff of, the, of actually Earth Week with, a, with a, kind of all the, a lot of environmental groups and, yeah. and different groups on the square. And Saturday is the big eco-fair at the Natural History Museum. Oh, that's and right. Sunday from 12 to noon. And then Sunday evening, well, Sunday evening I'll be giving a speech also at a... A church and then later on be on a radio talk show. The kickoff is from noon to? It's 12 to 5 Saturday and Sunday at the Natural five. History Museum. Uh huh. But really, it's a great, it's a, it's a great week. I really like it that you um, kind of take on uh, the stuff that should be concerning people. Um, you take on, here's something that I didn't see that you took on. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't take on Maplethorpe, but you went there. I understand. Yes, actually, uh, actually, it was by accident. I was intending to go, but the week prior to it opening, um, I was in a meeting downtown and going across the skywalk, and there was a special viewing. Oh, for out. <laughs> and and I knew the person at the desk, and they said, "Well, why don't you come in?" And I said, "Sure." And it was very nice. There was no crowd, and you could just and you weren't go totally disgusted or anything. No, I mean, Maplethorpe <laughs> is, is is a a a good photographer, and That's some right. some of his art is he's a great photographer. Uh -huh. um, I think the stuff that is causing the controversy, the X Y Z exhibit, um, you know, I might not purchase. Magazines that contain those pictures and probably yes. wouldn't. And I actually do object to, to the violence and the domination message yeah. that he is depicting. But I also understand he was seeking to depict what existed. Yeah. And that's real important to show. Do you think he was saying, um, would you all just take a look at this? Yeah. See what actually is going on? And talk about it. And talk about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and one of the benefits of all this controversy is that people are talking about it. Oh, definitely. I, it, and 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 I think <laughs> the people who wanted to censor the exhibit in many ways, um, that whole that backfired because there's That's much great. more conversation in the general community at large about not just free speech but about art and content and 
and what was he trying to do and what does that mean and what are cultural values and, yeah. and you know no one says and no one can say this is the value but the debate <laughs> is is I think exciting yeah I I get embarrassed every once in a while when Cincinnati does something like this yes and you know I mean national news you know that's fairly embarrassing you know but on the other hand it's like yeah, but the other side of Cincinnati really came out for this and uh, did start to talk about it. Yeah, the, I think that's important. The other side is is that the uh, that there is has been a tremendous amount of conversation about this, uh -huh. and in some ways, what is what's better? Is it better for Maplethorpe to come to town and there's no and discussion? Nobody sees it. Yeah, right. You know, or or it talks about it. Yeah, I don't think that talking about it necessarily means that Simon Lease and Larry Whalen and those folks have to go in and bust people, you know, and, and bust the exhibit. But, I mean, we don't have to have that. But yeah. the conversation is, I think, healthy. A friend of mine went down there. Uh, their teenager wanted to go, but she wasn't allowed to go right. because she was not old enough. And so they went in there when they were actually videotaping and when they closed down the show. And... Um, the uh, people who were held out of it were saying, the world is laughing, the world is laughing. <laughs> yeah, I live here. Pretty good. You you came from uh, somewhere close to Cincinnati, mm -hmm. Erlanger. Kentucky, pretty close, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just decided to live here forever? Well, um when I was growing up in Erlanger, Kentucky, I really did consider Cincinnati the beacon of progressive thought and enlightenment. And, you know, and, and sometimes great. you have to temper that attitude. Um, but um, I wanted to be in Cincinnati, and I really like cities, and, uh -huh. and so I came here. And it was. Did you think then that you wanted to be involved in the political life of this city? Well, what I thought was I wanted to be involved in politics, but I was like a lot of folks we know uh, from the late 60s and early 70s, politics to me uh, meant movement politics, uh -huh. uh, and particularly the women's movement. Uh -huh. So politics as elected office really wasn't on my agenda at the time. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be an appointment um, whenever Charlie Lucan gets um, elected to the Senate, I'm assuming he will. I mean, a, He has a strong chance of going to Congress, yeah. Yeah, and then you're going to be in city council at last. Well, you shouldn't, nothing in politics is certain, and nothing <laughs> is, is sure. Uh -huh. um, I'm optimistic. It's going to take a lot of work, frankly, um, but I was real encouraged. I need three council members. Democratic council members to uh, agree to my appointment, and uh -huh. as of yesterday, one has. Oh, good. And so it's a matter of progressing, and I think I have a good shot at it. Boy, and then once you get in there, you're in there, right? Because well, all the uh, people that get in just keep getting elected and elected for the next so many years. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that if you're appointed, if you're going to lose, it's going to be the very next election. And so okay. you just have to work like a dog. Well, I make mean, sure you win. It is amazing to me that you've worked so hard. I mean, a lot of people help me out who uh, have worked on your campaign. And like some of them are like, well, no problem. She'll stick with it in there and she'll come back and, you know, next year, next year. And some of them were like totally devastated and bum bummed out. Um, but you just seem to, you know, keep working on it, and next it'll happen. Time, it'll happen, boy. I really, I really think it will, and uh, I, uh, I want that to happen. Um, Actually, I think it's important for it to happen, not just because it's me, but yeah. uh, but when I win, it will send a signal that <clears throat> people who have been told that they cannot participate, they cannot hold office, uh, will know that that's not true. That's right. And that, you know, it might mean that you don't win the first time, it might mean you don't win the second time, 
But, you know, and I think the, clearly the political establishment got that message when I was just short 2,000 votes. That's right. They were in shock. God, that was great. I just I know. loved it. Yeah, Wednesday was a bummer the next day. Yeah. But it was, you know. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that. You recover. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I just, uh, I'm, I look at you up there and doing all the stuff you do, and I get so impressed. And um, people say stuff to me all the time about, oh, you're so, you know, this and that. And they talk about talent stuff, and it's like, give me a break, you know, next and um, it's, it's really nice that I can look at you and be real um, sort of impressed. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate what you do for well, this city. You. Um, thank you for being our guest. I appreciate the invitation. I really thank enjoyed you. it. Thank um, you. Maybe you'll stop by. I would love stop to. Stop by again. I would love to. M maybe you'll stop by after the appointment does now happen. Now, that would be a, be a blast. I would I love that. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you.